My name is Mrs. Comer, and I am the art teacher at Chris and Barry Elementary. Today, I'm going to teach you ways that you can make your very own homemade paintbrush from items that are lying around your house or items that you can find outside in your yard. You can use these paintbrush materials to make paintings. If you don't have paint, that's okay, because I'm going to show you some ways that you could paint outside with things like mud and water using your homemade paintbrushes as well. We'll also be learning about how professional artists create their own paintbrushes and the items that they use might surprise you. So I'm excited to do art with you today. Let's get started. I wanted to start out by actually showing you photographs of handmade paintbrushes that professional artists have made. We'll talk about some of the ways that they made them and some of the materials that they used as well. So when you're looking at these paintbrushes here, you'll notice that they have really interesting shapes. What do you think that they're made of? Well, the handle part is made from them carving wood. And the bristles, the part that you dip in the paint, is actually made of different types of hair. So you might be thinking, hair? People make paintbrushes out of hair? Yes, they do. If you were to look at this paintbrush right here, could you guess what kind of hair the artist used to make the bristles out of? It's actually hair from a white tail deer. Is there any way you got that right? Let me show you some more. Check this beautiful paintbrush out. Again, it's a handmade paintbrush created by a professional artist. So if you were to guess what this paintbrush was made out of, what do you think the artist used? The artist actually used skunk hair to make the bristles for their paintbrush. A skunk, can you imagine? So before we start talking about things that we need to make our own paintbrushes from scratch, like these other artists have, I wanted to show you a contemporary artist who's alive right now. He lives and works in Spain, and his name is Ferran Hisbert. And if you look right here at this picture, he is quite famous for going to art galleries and he takes this really, really large handmade paintbrush that you can see in this picture and he dips it in paint and ink and he actually paints directly on the walls of the gallery. So this is a paintbrush that he made. And what do you notice about it? Yeah, it's massive. It is probably the biggest paintbrush I've ever seen. So hopefully, after looking at some of these other artist paintbrushes and Ferran's work right here, we'll get some ideas about some fun and creative things that we can use to make our own paintbrushes with as well. So what I'm going to do is show you some pictures um, of examples of paintbrushes that are made from items in nature, and we'll go over a materials list, and then we'll get started on making our art. So now let's talk about how in the world are we going to make our own paintbrushes from scratch. Well, it's a lot easier than you would think. I know a lot of the art that we do together comes from nature, sticks, leaves, feathers, flowers, stuff like that. Um, but that's great because we always have that around us somewhere. So today we're going to be going outside. We're going to go on a scavenger hunt for things like sticks, blades of grass, a feather, flowers, and different kinds of flowers, different kinds of leaves. You could be using pine cones, um, parts of branches. Uh, there's so many different things that you could be using to create a paintbrush. And it doesn't have to just be things from outside. If you're walking around your house because maybe it's raining outside or it's cold, maybe you could go around your house and find some things that are disposable that you get permission to use that would make great bristles for paintbrushes. It's totally up to you. You're the artist. It's your choice. So right now I'm going to show you a materials list of things that I suggest that we use together today to get started on our art. And don't worry if you don't have string and paint and all these other kinds of things you've seen in the pictures. It'll be just fine. I'll show you some alternatives to all of it. All right, here's our materials list that we need for our art today, and we'll go over this very quickly. 
Uh, we're going to go outside on our scavenger hunt. I want you to look for sticks. I want you to look for leaves, different kinds of leaves in particular, grass. Make sure it's not too short. You want to be able to tie it on to a stick, so make sure it's kind of long. Feathers, if you can find them, of course, with anything outside that you find, wash your hands after you use it, especially before eating or touching your face. Flowers and different kinds of flowers. Anything that you can find outside for your bristles will be great. In order to get it to stay on your sticks, I need you to find rubber bands or string. Now here are some optional things. You might not have rubber bands or string lying around your house. Some other items that you could use to make your bristles stay on your stick to create your paintbrush. You could use tape. You could use plastic grocery bags from the grocery store that you use scissors to cut up into strips. And then you can use that like a string. You could also use bread ties from off of loaves of bread in your house. Anything that you find in your house, I want you to be creative. Ask yourself, is this going to help my bristles stay on my stick so that I can use it as a paintbrush? Hey artists, the first thing I'm gonna do is go outside and go on my own scavenger hunt to look for items that I can use to make my own homemade paintbrushes with. We'll spend about a minute doing this, so if you wanna spend one minute at your house right now trying to gather materials, that's enough time if you do it really fast. Are you ready? All right, artists, so you saw me go on my scavenger hunt. I'm gonna tell you a few of the things that I found. I picked a little patch of clovers I thought would be really fun to have as bristles together in one paintbrush. So I'm gonna keep them together right here. I picked a dandelion. I thought maybe that could be a really fun paintbrush to use to paint with later. I grabbed some tree bark. I might do more scraping with it but I wanted to grab it because I thought it could give me some really cool um, brush strokes or bark strokes, really. Found a gumball. I found some leaves and they're already on a stick. So they're already kind of like a paintbrush all by themselves. I got several different kinds of sticks that are, um, some are thin and some are thicker that I'll use to be the base of my paintbrushes. I found blades of grass that are long enough for me to clump together like this for my paintbrush. And then I found this other really tall type of grass that I thought would be really fun to paint with as well. Now, as far as things that I can use to actually attach my nature objects to my sticks to make my paintbrushes, I have tape at my house, which I'm gonna try a little bit of. I found an old bread tie that I wanted to try. And actually, I had a hair tie on my wrist and I was wanting to experiment with my hair tie and see if that ended up working out as well. So the first thing you wanna do is take one of your sticks like this and then choose one of your nature objects. I think the first one that I wanna to choose to put together is actually going to be my tall, fluffy grass. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of tear it like this so I can get the end pieces a little shorter. And my goal right now is to put them together in a clump, like a little bunch like this. I'm gonna try to make sure that the ends are kind of together. I notice this one's extra long. I might move it down a little bit. And I'm gonna pick one of my sticks out. And I'm gonna take my stick and just kind of put it around them like this. And then I'm gonna pick out one of my tools for connecting them. I think for these, because they're so fluffy, 
I might try to use some tape. And again, you're the artist, it's your choice. So whatever you're working with at your house is great. We're just experimenting here, trying to create new things. And if it doesn't work out well, try to figure out what went wrong and fix it and problem solve and then try a different one. All right, so I'm trying to get my tape on pretty tight like this. And then just like this, I have created my first paintbrush from scratch. It didn't cost me any money. It just took a little bit of time finding the right materials outside. So I'm gonna set this paintbrush right here. My next one, I have a smaller stick. Let's see, maybe I will attach my dandelion to this one. Maybe use it more like a stamp than a paintbrush. I'm gonna use tape for this one too. I just really light tape. I'm gonna roll it down the ends like this, making sure it's pretty secure. If I had more time, I probably would go outside and try to find some more wildflowers to use as stamps or paint brushes, of course just to get some variety in what I'm gonna be doing today. And just like that, I have another paintbrush. Set that here with my little collection. I have this thin stick. I think this time, you know what? I'm gonna try my blades of grass. So I'm gonna take these and I'm ripping them so that the ends will pretty much be the same length. It doesn't have to be perfect, of course. These are homemade paint brushes. And you know what? I might try to experiment with my hair tie. Let's see if I can get this to work. Now oh, this is gonna be fun. What do you think? Set this right here. And I already had one of these. I think what I'm gonna do now is just break this part off and use this as its own paintbrush. Nature kind of provided me with a whole paintbrush setup right here. And then for this one, I'm gonna take these clovers and maybe I'll use a bread tie. Try to get this to stay on like this. Again, we're just experimenting. Here, I have a little paintbrush. So now, let's talk about what can we do with these amazing paintbrushes. Um, if you have paint in your house, you can actually take these, take a little paper plate and a paint palette and just start dipping them in and painting. I'll show you what that would look like in just a minute. You can also, if you don't have paint, go back outside with your paintbrushes Find some mud or some water and dip it in there and practice painting on the sidewalk with mud and water. That's also a form of painting. So what I'm gonna go do now is grab some paint and we'll see what kind of marks that I can make with my new paintbrushes. So check it out guys, these are amazingly different and interesting marks that I've made with my brand new paintbrushes that I've made from scratch. So hopefully today you're able to make lots of different kinds of paintbrushes, try to be as creative as you can be, look at objects both inside your home and outside, um, wondering would this make a great paintbrush, could these be bristles? And again, if you don't have paint, try to find something outside in nature that you could paint with. I've had so much fun with you today. I hope you spend today inside and outside being as creative as you can be. I'll see you next time. Hi, I'm Mrs. Curran. I work at Farragut Primary School. And in 
celebration of the spring and the summer on its way, I thought today we could do a drawing of a jar that you might catch bugs in in the backyard um, and some of the bugs that you might see. We're going to use um, pencil and markers and maybe a little bit of our fingers. So join me and we'll get started. I'm gonna start by drawing a big U shape that fills up a good lower portion of the paper. So I'm gonna go straight down the side here and then I'm gonna sort of curve my way over and then back up the other side. So that's gonna be the bottom of our jar shape. And then let's go make kind of a diagonal line going in on both sides. They're not exactly matching, but that's okay. So now I'm gonna connect these two lines with a curved line, kind of like a smiley line. And that is gonna start the top of my jar. I want to do a little bit of a wavy line going up. So I'm doing kind of like maybe three bumps on my wavy line going straight up from the, um, the point there. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Three bumps. Okay, and hopefully they're about the same size. And then I'm gonna connect those with another curved line. And the curved line is there to make the jar look a little bit more three-dimensional, a little bit more like real life. Okay, so to show the top of my jar, we're gonna make an oval shape. So I'm just gonna continue that line. And it's just a curved line going up this time. So that's gonna be the top of my jar. Now to make those kind of um, marks on the side with a top would screw on, I'm gonna start on this side and I'm gonna draw a line, maybe not all the way across, just to suggest that textured um, bumps on the side of the jar lid. And then I'm gonna come back on the other side and do a few little lines to show that texture. So that's our jar lid that we can imagine unscrewing. The other thing I'm gonna do to make our jar look a little more realistic is I'm gonna just add a few little extra lines, a little curvy one there going diagonally and a straight one coming down and then a straight line over here to suggest a little bit of a reflection in our glass jar. And then at the bottom, I'm gonna do um, almost an oval, but not quite. We're not gonna connect it. So I'm gonna start in the middle, draw a curve line going down, and then bring it around across the bottom, and then just stop. I'm gonna outline this first with some black marker. If you don't have a black marker, you could use a black crayon. go ahead and put a line behind it from the edge of the jar to the side. That's my horizon line. So this is where the ground is going to be and that's where the sky is going to be. Now next, I'm going to start adding some insects, some bugs. So you can use your fingers for this. Um, and I'm using washable markers. I'm just going to use my pinky finger and I'm gonna draw a circle with my marker at the end of my pinky finger. Then I'm gonna take my pinky finger and I'm just gonna press it down at the bottom of my jar. So there you see the print of my finger and this is gonna make a caterpillar for our jar. Um, you can just draw circles if you wanted to draw circles and fill them in with your marker, you could do it that way. But it's kind of fun to use your finger to print so next I'm gonna take my black marker again and I'm gonna add a couple round eyes and some antennas. I'm gonna give them a little smile and then I'm gonna add two little legs to each section of our caterpillar. And I think next I'm gonna add a B. So I'm finding my yellow marker for the B and this one is not gonna come out quite as dark as my 
caterpillar green, but I'm gonna make a nice yellow circle on my one of my bigger fingers, and we'll just print that in the middle of the jar. It's kind of light, but that's okay. So we have our bee body, and then we're gonna add some black lines for the bee, and he needs a little stinger. And then I think I'll add a couple of bigger wings and then maybe a couple little wings that help him fly. And I'm just gonna add two little dots for his eyes and a little antenna there. Next, I'm gonna try a spider because I've been seeing a lot of spiders around outside. My spider is going to be brown. So I'm coloring in the end of my finger nice and brown. My, this is time I'm using my index finger. You don't have to use natural colors for your bugs. You could use bright colors, colors that maybe aren't realistic, but are colors that you like, and that would be okay. So for my spider, he needs to have eight legs, so let's do eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight legs. And we need some cute big eyes for the spider. And we'll make him a happy spider. We like spiders at my house because they take care of those other bugs that we don't like so much. And if you wanted to, you could add a little bit of a web on the side there. See how I made those web marks going in and then we'll just connect each one and that'll make our little web for our spider. Ladybugs are supposed to be lucky when they land on you, so I always get excited if I see a ladybug that's landed on me or if I see ladybugs out in the yard. For some reason they creep me out less than the other bugs. So I'm coloring in my ink. This one's a little dry, so it's probably not gonna be too dark. Yeah, it's pretty light. Maybe I'll do, I'll try adding some extra on there. Or you could just go ahead and use your marker to color in a little bit extra. Or a crayon, maybe. If you don't have that marker. And so for the ladybug, we gotta remember that it has spots. I'm gonna draw a line first to separate the head from the body, and then a little line down its back to show where its wings are. And then we'll just color in some little black spots around its body. And ladybugs, along with most other insects, have six legs, so I'm gonna draw three legs on either side to total six. And then we'll give our ladybug some cute little eyes and maybe, I don't know, maybe we could give him a couple of antennas sticking up. That always makes it look cute. I'm gonna pick out a really pretty color for the butterfly. And this time I'm gonna have to do multiple fingerprints for this one. The other ones we only used one except for the caterpillar. This one we're gonna use one for each wing. So I'm gonna do a fingerprint there this finger is going to be really colorful. And another one next to it. Those will be its top wings. And then I'm going to add two more wings there and there. And for the butterfly, we're going to add its body with the black marker. So the butterfly body is kind of long and skinny. Maybe it has some lines on it. And then I'm going to add some big circle eyes to the top and some fun antenna with a little ball at the end. Maybe we could do some fireflies. Those are some bugs my daughters and my son really like catching in jars. So let's see, I'll do one. Maybe I'll do three fireflies. Two, and you can think of all kinds of other bugs. You could add some ants beetles, um, grasshoppers would be a good one to try. So for the firefly, I'm just gonna give him some little eyes here and some little wings. 
maybe I'll separate that back part of his body and we'll put a few little legs on there and then I'm gonna add I'm gonna use a crayon this time since my yellow is getting kind of light I'm gonna add this little bright circle to the end of him that way you can tell he's lighting up so I'll do the same with these other two so when my Girls like to catch little bugs, roly polies, or whatever they might find in the yard. They'll um, put some leaves and sticks in the jar. Maybe give it something to munch on or something to climb on. So there's kind of like a little branch you can add. My brown marker is getting a little bit low too, so I'm going to. Add a little bit of crayon to that one to make it darker. You can just use whatever you have, whatever works best that's at your house. And I think I'll add some, maybe some vines here coming up the side. We can put some leaves on the vine. A little leaf shape and just color it in. Add some bigger leaves. Let's see, we'll add a big leaf over here for this caterpillar to chew on. You know, like the very hungry caterpillar, he might need some snacks. So we'll put a leaf over there. And I think I'll color in that leaf with some lighter crayon. Let's see. And I think maybe we'll do a pretty, pretty flower in here about really filling up your jar. You could do some silly stuff in the jar too. Maybe your bugs would like some playground equipment to play on. Maybe they would want a little tiny slide or a little tiny swing set to play on. There's a lot of things you could do in this besides just plain old sticks and leaves like me. Be creative. I want one more big leaf over here. That'll look pretty. Give our bugs something to do. And then I'm gonna go ahead and get my gray marker here. And I'm going to color in the lid of my jar. And my next step would be to Maybe add some color to the jar itself. I have a nice light blue crayon that I think I'm gonna add some color to the jar. And then we can think about our background. So let me get my light blue crayon. Actually, it just looks like a normal blue. That's Crayola Cerulean. So I could draw some clouds up here in the sky. You could draw a sun. You could draw some trees in the background. So that's gonna be all filled in in just a minute. And I'm gonna start coloring in a little bit more of my jar. Okay, there's my final picture. I went ahead and added the background, some clouds, some grass. I used some crayon to help with the background color and a little bit of the background of my jar. I added some light blue and a couple extra bugs, some leaves and sticks. So I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you would like to post any pictures of your uh, drawing on my Facebook page. It's FPS Art. And I hope you guys have a really good day and are enjoying your springtime weather. Get out there and uh, enjoy nature and look for some bugs. Have a good one.